What's up guys, Caleb here with another installment of Reality Check and today I'm joined by my main man, Graham. Sup. Sup. Because we've got a really special video today. We're talking about something awesome, something that is new on the market. It's those brand new Ryzen 5s, baby. Ha! <laughs> that was the choir from heaven. No, it was great. I, I was just imagining like the arms in lifting. this glorious moment. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to say a huge shout out to our boys over at Eve Tech who hooked us up with the Ryzen 5 before its release date so we could do this review for y'all, yeah. test the yeah. numbers, and yeah. give you that information. They will be available for purchase on Eve Tech's website, evetech.co.za. So go show them a little bit of love and get yourself a nice new Ryzen, bro. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so today is all about the AMD Ryzen 5 36. And these are probably the most hyped CPUs pretty much ever. Like ever. people have been going yeah. crazy about them online, dude. And they've been touted as sort of like the second coming, these third generation CPUs. So the question we're asking ourselves now is just purely based on the numbers, are they worth the hype? Yeah, so we're testing, like I said, we're testing the Ryzen 5 3600, which is kind of middle of the range, like territory. It's between the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 7. There is a Ryzen 9. That's like a whole new thing, so we're not really considering that right now. We're gonna keep that out of the equation. Yeah. Um, the Ryzen 5s have typically been like the sweet spot for performance versus cost, because they're super fast and they're super affordable. So the system we tested our brand spanking new Ryzen 3600 in had an RTX 2060, 2060 oh, in man. it. 2060. <laughs> <laughs> an RTX 2060 in it and 32 gigs of RAM all wrapped inside EveTech's brand new Nova case. We're going to do another little plug here because listen, it is quite sexy. Like yeah. look at all that RGB. Super nice. yeah, it I think it's also going to be available in white yeah. if you're interested. It definitely is, but then there's no front glass panel, but still pretty moist. Yeah. As a point of reference, we're going to be comparing our brand spanking new Ryzen to the previous gen Ryzen 5 2600. X, just as a point of reference. And why a Ryzen 2600X, you ask? Because we're poor, and that's kind of what we have. The one we have, so yeah. that's the one we're testing. Dash live. And we've somewhat stacked the odds here a little bit against the 3600. The system with the 2600X in it is water-cooled with an NZXT Kraken, whereas the system with the 3600 in it just uses the stock fan that you get with the, that you get with the CPU itself. It is a really nice fan as far as stock fans go. It's got RGB and everything, but it's still just air-cooled versus water-cooled. Also, the RTX 2060 in the system with the 2600X in it, a lot of 20s and 60s around here, um, is overclocked. It's a factory overclock system from Aorus as opposed to the regular clocked MSI we have in the other one. We're mainly doing it this way just purely for the sake of time. We only have a couple days to get all this testing done, and we really don't want to have to deal with the faff of swapping out CPUs and all that business. Also, we, I don't think we have thermal paste. Yeah, and we're not going to do anything like overclocking or anything like that. We just wanted to get that close to out-the-box performance as you can get, because that's how most people will be using it in that context. And everything was also done on a 1440p monitor with 155 hertz refresh rate. Yes. So pretty standardized testing, I would say. 155 hertz. <laughs> Good job, Del. Well done, Del. Well done. <laughs> Let's jump into some of the tests regarding this Ryzen 5. Let's start off with the synthetic tests. Now, synthetic tests are not necessarily a good way to benchmark your CPU, just because the results in isolation can be pretty arbitrary and they don't really make sense. What they are good for, though, is a point of reference. So at the end of the test, you obviously get a number, which, like Caleb said, means nothing in isolation. But what you can do is compare that number to other tests from other computers see how it did. Starting off with Cinebench, we tested on both 15 and 20, just because 20 is obviously the more updated engine, but 15 still gives you a lot more results to kind of give a reference point to what your score was. So in Cinebench 15, the multi-core tests, we were getting about 300 points more in the 3600 tests over the 2600X, and a bit more than that over the i7-8700K. We're comparing it to an 8700K because the ninth gen i7s have eight core CPUs. We kind of want to stay in the realm of six cores just for the sake of parity. The single core performance is around 30 points over the Ryzen 2600X. And crucially here, it's in line with the 8700K. Now, the reason this is important is because over the last few years, AMD has kind of developed this reputation of being the multi-core kings whilst lagging behind in single core performance. But with these new third generation processes, it seems like they've kind of closed the gap while still maintaining a head in multi-core performance. Moving on to Cinebench 20, the results are pretty much the same. The 3600 beats out the 2600X by nearly a thousand points in multi-core tests, about close to a hundred points in single-core tests. 
And once again, we see the rise in the head in multi-core tests and pretty much matching single core tests for the 8700K. So that's pretty impressive performance, just at least from the Cinebench side of things. It's like a good, good starting point. Yeah. Moving on to PCMark now, PCMark basically tests your CPU in a series of simulated day-to-day -day tasks like conference video calls or web surfing, emailing or photo editing, etc. Our test got us a result of 6,252, which is around 500 more than the 2600X. And it's about on par with the 8700K, which it beats by a few hundred points. Not bad considering the fact that the 8700K is nearly double the price. Not bad at all. No. Yeah. I do declare. <laughs> Moving on swiftly to 3D Mark and Time Spy. 3D Mark has basically been like the de facto benchmarking tool yep. for like ever. ever. Bro, like since the dawn of time, <laughs> since the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> The Time Spy test just gives you an overall score for your CPU and GPU, as well as an individual score for your CPU. The 2600X gave us a score of around 6,232. The 3600 comes in at nearly a thousand points more, with the 8700K not far behind. But again, given that the price difference is that substantial, it's still really impressive. <laughs> That's gonna be my thing. <laughs> now benchmarks can only tell you so much, bro. We need to put this thing into the real world, you know, push it to the edge a little bit. I'm talking Premier Pro, motherfucker. Said I wasn't gonna swear, but I did but it you anyway. Did. You knew it was coming. <laughs> it was coming. So we did two minutes of 4K footage at H.264, a two-pass export, 30 megabits per second, which is a little bit higher than necessary, but why not, you know, push it to the extremes just a little bit? Yeah. This took six minutes and 54 seconds on the 2600X and five minutes and 36 seconds on the 2600. That may not sound substantial, but when you're editing, time is money. Yeah, and that, that's that's actually substantial enough for me to be like, yeah, yeah I would choose that over this, like exactly. at least five minutes extra. Also another note on this, we did this all using external drives just so we could like pass things around between computers really easily. So if you're doing it on like an SSD or something, your renders are gonna be even faster. Yeah, which is actually insane. I didn't even think about yeah. that, that we were running out of externals. Moving on to the H.265 export, we also did another 4K clip that was two minutes long, obviously formatted to H.265 HEVC. Hope you people are kind of understanding this. <laughs> yeah. It was one pass export, 15 megabits per second. And yeah, this is this is a taxing test for your yeah. for your CPU from inside Premiere. Like this this will this will smate it, bro. H.265 is a really intense exp uh, expression. <laughs> it <is. laughs> it's a really intense compression. So you get really good results with really small files, but it takes a long hell ass time. <laughs> 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 On the 3600, we're looking at a render time of two hours and ten minutes. This is probably the most substantial difference we got. Mm. On the 2600X, it was close to three hours at two hours and 50 minutes. So like that's... Substantial. And again, like we said for editors, time is money, dude. And now finally, we're moving on to the games, bro. That's what you're here for. Yeah, the sweet, sweet games. You guys actually aren't going to buy a Ryzen 5 unless you're going to get it for gaming. Like, Probably. Bastards. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. <laughs> now, keep in mind that the only thing we're testing is how much better it performs than the previous generation, not how well it can run these games. Yeah, we also did all the tests at 1440p because this is kind of really quickly becoming the default resolution is 4K, is slight a grasp for, for most people, and 1440p high refresh rate monitors are really quickly becoming affordable. And also these games were tested with screen recordings on, so that is gonna snag about five frames away from the performance. Yeah, they steal your frames a bit. Let's start off with The Witcher 3, because despite the fact that this game came out four years ago, it is still one of the most graphically intensive games. It's so f***ing demanding, dude. It's actually insane. It doesn't feel like it came out that long ago. Yeah, it still, it still feels 2015. like 2015. Yeah, no, it still feels like a really modern game. Here at Ultra Settings, with the exception of Hairworks, which was on low, and Ambient Occlusion, were comfortably sitting above 80 frames per second pretty much the entire time on the 3600X. Whereas on the 2600X, we're sitting closer to around 60. Occasionally we'd dip below 50, occasionally we'd dip above 70. Rainbow Six Siege. RSS sits at about 155 frames per second nonstop. Just like, it doesn't end. And it's only because you can't unlock the frame rate. It's dictated by the refresh rate of your monitor. 155, nonstop. Like nonstop. It's like a train. Going at 155 hertz. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Moving on to the 2600X, you're going to lose about 20 to 30 frames. So there's a significant improvement there. Ghost Recon Wildlands is a system killer. It is a super demanding game. In fact, it's the only game we didn't test 
at maxed out settings. On the very high preset, we're sitting at around an average of 65 frames per second. Whereas on the 2600X, we're sitting at 60 and below on the same settings. We tested the Division 2 at max settings and got an average of around 60 frames per second. Whilst on the 2600X, we got from the mid 40s to the low 50s and it dipped occasionally to around 20 frames per second. That seemed to be more of an anomaly than anything else. So I was actually a little surprised by the Apex Legends results. I was expecting more for some reason. I don't know why we're sitting at around 100 frames per second most of the time. Whereas on the 2600X, we were sitting at around 80 with maybe the occasional sp spike to 90. Yeah, it was a little bit strange. I was expecting yeah. it to do better. Our last game was Doom. Now this one is a little bit of an outlier because it pretty much ran exactly the same on both systems. I can't remember the last bit of the line. So I, <laughs> but this is a game that can run on a Switch. So it's incredibly well optimized and yeah. not, I guess, really the best test in the world for Ryzen, but nice to just play nice for play. fun. Gives an excuse to play Doom and yeah, work. Take any excuse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, just on a note, we didn't record, we didn't test any ray tracing games because ray tracing is all about your GPU, not your CPU. So it's kind of irrelevant to what we're doing. I think the word he used was bupkis. Bupkis. Bupkis to do with the CPU. That's true. Well, there it is. So our Ryzen's third generation process is the be all and the end all of all computing. Well, I guess it depends on your expectations. Yes. This represents a pretty standard jump in generational tech, but it seems like people out there were expecting it to like decimate the i9s and I just, you know, that's not going to happen. Yeah, something like a 3600 is not going to compete realistically with an i9. Sure, like a Ryzen 9 might outdo it, but a 3600 probably isn't going to. These CPUs don't massively outperform their Intel counterparts. They were never going to, but they do represent massively better value. That's what makes Ryzen's special. That's what put AMD back on the map, is offering performance that matches Intel's at a much lower price. Also keep in mind that all the games we tested can run significantly better with some tweaked settings. And also if you ran at 1080p as opposed to 1440p, hell, even the 2600X would still be really good if you tweak some settings and played at 1080p. So if you're thinking about getting that when the prices drop once the third gen processes come out that's not a bad idea at all that's a great idea yeah. but either way if you're planning on getting a new computer or upgrading it is impossible right now not to recommend an amd processor be it a ryzen or a threadripper the value for money that they represent is just untouchable right now undeniable you'll move intel bring it bring it Bring it in, Tal. We're calling you out here. Well, so AMD so you do bring it in, Tal. Like, get better. Yeah, come on. Or just like get cheaper. <laughs> One of the two, please, for the love bring of God. Down. Anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps it up with this installment of a reality check. Really hope you enjoyed this video. We know it's pretty long and pretty wordy, but here's all the numbers laid out factually so you can know what the Ryzen 5 3600 is all about. Yeah. yeah. Also, since we don't have a limited number of time to do these tests, if there's anything else you want to see, let us know. Let us know down in those comments below. We'll run some more tests now that we have the computer. And yeah, we'll see what the results are. Yeah, and also just want to give another huge shout out to our boys over at EveTech once more for sending this our way for review. Oh, <laughs> as Graham did earlier. They really are our pals and they hook us up with stuff when we need them. So go show them a little bit of love. Check out their website, evetech.co.za. See if there's anything you want to grab there. Don't forget to hit like. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Holler at your boy Graham as well. So, just say, hey Graham, <laughs> you're looking sexy, ma. <laughs> And I'll catch you guys next time for another installment of Reality Check. Peace! Also, just so you know, we don't have release date of prices on these things yet, but we'll let you know as soon as those are available. Yeah, we'll leave it in the video description. There it is.